everyone, I'm Natalia Bilbao, and here's what's happening in LA this week. Did you know that buildings in our city account for 43% of the total greenhouse gas emissions? Councilmember Nithya Raman, alongside city officials and Mayor Garcetti, addressed the urgent need to decarbonize new commercial and residential buildings in Los Angeles. This will be a huge step towards fighting climate change and allowing communities to enjoy the cleaner, greener, and healthier city that they deserve. Let's take a look. Thank you for joining us today as we embark on a very exciting process, the process of creating a framework to decarbonize all new residential and commercial buildings in the city of Los Angeles. Buildings actually make up the largest source of our climate pollution citywide. They account for 43% of greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than cars. It's more than what's produced by the manufacturing sector in our city. So if we're gonna get to the healthier, cleaner, more sustainable city that I know we all share a vision for, then we are going to have to tackle this issue of greening our buildings head on. I think this is the next big step that we're going to be taking in terms of halting climate change and providing leadership to the rest of the country and the world. Uh, we're, we're focused on more electric vehicles, reducing air pollution in that way. But buildings are one of the great sources of pollution and greenhouse gases. And so if we decarbonize all our new buildings, we then go back and retrofit all our existing buildings, we will take a huge step forward in fighting climate change. You know, the climate crisis is incredibly urgent. Our communities in South LA feel the impacts of the climate crisis first and worse. And so we need to take bold action around clean energy and workforce development. We as a society are gonna to have to do everything possible to respond to the realities of climate change and move to a clean energy future. And we're really focused in knowing that if we don't start with folks most impacted, if we don't do this right, if we don't make sure that this transition happens with union jobs and with frontline communities at the center of it, it's just not gonna work. In terms of our climate emergency, Los Angeles is already facing some of the worst impacts. We're seeing it with increased wildfire threat. We're seeing it with heat in the valley, um, in particular, where we're seeing urban heat increases, we're seeing people dying in their homes because they don't have air conditioning um, because of rising temperatures. So I think for us in Los Angeles, taking action on these issues feels more urgent, feels more present to us because we live with those dangers every single day. We must ensure that the city we're building today is laying the groundwork for the cleaner, healthier, and more equitable and sustainable Los Angeles of tomorrow. The city of LA is bringing back their partnership with Free Tax Prep LA to help Angelinos get the money they are owed. Low to moderate income families can benefit from this program to complete their taxes, as well as get other free services like food assistance and immigration services. Check it out. So this is the sixth year. We had to skip year five because of the pandemic, but the sixth year that we've come together across LA County to make sure you get the money that you're owed. The city and the county have combined forces. We're providing free tax preparation across the region so that families that are low income can access free basic tax preparation services. Ahorita estoy aquí porque voy a hacer mis taxes y aquí no me cobran nada y donde yo iba cobran 200. Y aquí no me cobra nada, es completamente gratis. It's going to be prepared by a licensed preparer. And in addition to that, all of our locations provide many more services. You can access things like food assistance, immigration, after school programming, all for free as well. So majority of our locations are in the city of Los Angeles. Each location is offering different options for tax prep. Majority are doing them in person. Que vengan, aprovechen este programa que es gratuito, no van a pagar nada para hacer sus taxes. Les aconsejamos que vayan al sitio, si pueden ir en persona, a los sitios comunitarios, o si pueden visitar nuestra website, freetaxprepla.com. Ahí podrán ver um, si los sitios están abiertos para en persona, o si tiene que hacer cita, o lo están haciendo virtualmente. This is something we leave literally billions of dollars on the table every year, which is why I've been passionate about this for 20 years. And through our family source centers, we're helping get tens of millions of dollars back in the hands of Angelinos. 
Council member Curran Price was on hand to share his excitement over the new football and baseball fields at the South Park Rec Center. Exhibits, fun games, and free food were offered to residents of CD9 to celebrate the ribbon cutting. The city is determined to invest in the communities that need the resources the most, and what better way than by creating safe places for children and families to play. We're just real excited here at South Park. This is continuing our commitment to the community. Today, we're gonna to be opening up the football field, baseball diamond, and just the continued improvements supporting families and children here in the South Park area. We're gonna have some exciting exhibits. We've got some fun games, we've got some food, and most importantly, we will have a chance for kids just to play and have some fun. We are very mindful of how we're allocating the funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. We want to make sure that we are investing these resources in the communities that need the resources the most. We want to create safe places for families and children to play and to enjoy their neighborhoods. We hope this field provides the same opportunities that I had growing up, given the opportunity to be in the NFL. And I say hopefully one day y'all keep working hard, I may be able to get to play against some of y'all. So. Y'all keep working hard. <laughs> it's about you kids, right? It's about you guys achieving greater heights, about doing something better for your life. We're all about helping young people discover more about who they want to be and where they want to go. And we think the three things that equate to that are having great things to do, great people to look up to, and most importantly, incredible communities like this and safe spaces and inspiring spaces to go to. This field will not only provide a place for kids to play, but also learn valuable life lessons like teamwork, perseverance, and leadership that will serve them well long beyond their playing years. The future of this park will be up to you. It will be up to you and your families. Use it for good. Let this be a place of gathering for all, and let us all come together to play in LA in your Recreation and Parks Department. Thank you. Coming together to play games in the new sport fields at South Park isn't the only activity in Council District 9. Later in the show, we'll see what CD9 is doing to keep their streets clean and how other Angelinos can do the same in their neighborhoods. Spalding Square, now part of Council District 13, is located in one of the oldest parts of Los Angeles. Recently, local residents and Council Member Mitchell Farrell came together for a community cleanup. The council member was there to lend a hand and talk about his desire to help his new constituents access city services. Today is a great opportunity to not only meet our new councilman, Mitchell Farrell, but also get the neighbors together and do a little cleanup. Bueno, el día de hoy estamos limpiando las calles, recogiendo los artículos grandes para sanitar. Así es, es una colaboración voluntaria para venir a ayudar a hacer la limpieza aquí en las calles. We're just so thrilled as one of the oldest parts of Los Angeles to be able to come out as a community. You know, it's been a long time because of COVID since we've been able to come together. We traditionally have, you know, huge neighborhood community events. We have a brand new council member. He's only been representing Sporting Square for a month, but we were actually in CD13 nearly 30 years ago. And it's so wonderful for us to have this incredible support from our council member. We're here at Spalding Square, Sunset Square on Sunset Boulevard, which is uh, the boundary between the two historic preservation overlay zones that are now in the 13th district. We're doing a new sidewalk and driveway apron. We're doing a cleanup. We're distributing information on how constituents can access city services like we always do. And we're going to go around with a sanitation truck picking up bulky items. We still have discarded Christmas trees, believe it or not. So we'll be doing that uh, all morning long. Los Angeles is such a huge, huge city. And people don't think we have neighborhoods, but we do. It's wonderful to have such close relationships with our neighbors and, you know, get a little workout. Mitchell Farrell has already arranged to have our broken sidewalk and curb area at the entrance to Sporting Square here fixed. He's so interested and engaged in our whole community and our whole district. There aren't so many places in Los Angeles like Sporting and Sunset Squares anymore. And you know we're just so delighted to have the support. And it's just so lovely to come out on this gorgeous day and you know 
have some face-to-face -face time with our neighbours and members of our community. The youth sports program Play LA returns to local rec centers. New strategies are being discussed to prevent rail theft, and the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium obtains a sensory inclusivity certification. All this up next on City Beat. The youth sports program Play LA launched its new season after being delayed due to the recent surge in COVID-19 cases. Play LA offers young people ages 5 to 17 a safe place to participate in sports through their local recreation center. The program was created through a $160 million investment from the LA 28 Olympic and Paralympic Games and the International Olympic Committee. The donation aims to make sports in LA more accessible and affordable to all kids throughout the city. To discover available activities and register for the Play LA program, visit laparks.org slash play dash LA. The Trade, Travel and Tourism Committee for the City of Los Angeles met to discuss new strategies to fight rail theft on Union Pacific cargo lines. The rising theft of cargo from containers transported on rail has been a focus of attention in recent months. Multi-jurisdictional efforts between Union Pacific, Los Angeles Police Department, California Highway Patrol, and other agencies have increased recent arrests. Rail theft has put additional strain on the highly tasked supply chain delivering goods across the U.S. from the Port of L.A. To view L.A. City Council committee meetings and agendas, visit clerk.lacity.org slash calendar. Cabrillo Marine Aquarium has partnered with the nonprofit Culture City to certify their programs and events as sensory inclusive. Sensory sensitivities or challenges with sensory regulation affect one in six people, including individuals with autism, PTSD, and other conditions. With its new certification, the aquarium is now better prepared to help guests have a comfortable and accommodating experience. To learn more about the programs and opportunities at Cabrillo Marine Aquarium, visit cabrillomarineaquarium.org. Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez is ready to hit the ground running this 2022. There are many things the residents of Council District 7 can look forward to, like new facilities, open space opportunities, and initiatives to make young people more engaged with their community. The Councilwoman is committed to making sure her constituents have their needs met. 2022 is going to be a lot like 2017 when I first came into office and I'm gonna be hitting the ground, running hard, even in the midst of this pandemic. We're gonna to continue to open up and reveal opportunities that our communities have never enjoyed prior to me being in office. In addition to the facilities here at West Lakeside Park that we look forward to opening, we have projects that are happening in Lake Terrace at Lopez Canyon. So there's a lot of great open space opportunities that we're gonna be delivering this year and in the years to come. The Olivia Mitchell Youth Council is an opportunity for us to engage more young people to being part of the solution and participating in their local government. And so I'm looking forward to seeing more young Angelinos from every corner of our city being more engaged and learning more about how they can be part of the solutions here at City Hall. One of the opportunities that I'm most excited about is the areas where we're offering resources to pilot the removal of RVs and moving people into permanent supportive housing. And so working very closely with LASA and so many of our partners, we're gonna to continue to make progress in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. So in addition to the work that I've led to help reconstitute our emergency evacuations for large animals and equine keeping areas, we're gonna to continue to help promote safety and registration for those owners and their animals. And so I'm looking forward to having another Make Your Horse Count event and engaging all the members of our area to come out and enjoy these very spectacular events, especially around the love of, of our animals and our families. I'm gonna to continue to remain focused, as I have in the last five years, on working to improve our traffic conditions and safety for our pedestrians, our equestrians, our bicyclists, and our motorists. And the way we're gonna do that is continuing to invest in improving our transportation corridors. We have secured, in my tenure, $183 million worth of public improvements. 
I'm looking forward to continuing to advance opportunities that help deliver unique solutions for jobs that meet the needs for our neighborhoods. Councilmember Curran Price has teamed up with community organizations and LA Sanitation to create rapid response teams to help clean up Council District 9. Keeping our streets clean is a necessary community effort. So if you see any bulky items or debris on your street, call 311 or reach out via the 311 app and they will remove it. We're just excited to bring together a team of individuals that are committed to helping keep CD9 clean. Rapid Response is a team which council member Kern Price put together for rapid response for items and different things that's in your neighborhood that doesn't quite get picked up as fast and quick as you would want them to be picked up. So he put this team together so we can get out there and be a quicker response to every need that's in our district. Conservation Corps works with young people. Right now, we're working primarily with young people who are 18 to 26 years old. And we were very lucky to be asked to serve as the Clean and Green teams in CD9. And so we have three, soon to be four, crews of Corps members who are coming out into the district and cleaning up uh, major corridors every day. The Enterprise's mission is changing lives one job at a time. We hire and train youth and young adults to help us and assist with the beautification efforts, primarily in CD9. We focus on alleyways, school zones, and uh, different neighborhoods. But our more part of our, the bulk of our work is uh, weed abatement, bulky item, and loose litter. Report any bulky items, any debris that gets put out, call 311, report it to 311, or they could download my 311 app and actually report it on the app. La oficina del concejal Karen D. Price está comprometida a limpiar la comunidad, este, pero necesitamos la ayuda de ustedes para poder este, limpiar, y pa, porque este es un programa, un problema muy grande. Este, si por favor puede usar el 311, llamando al 311 o usar la aplicación, um, eso ayuda mucho para este, mantener la comunidad este, limpia. Council member Kevin DeLeon showcased his best dance moves in a special event to recognize the Mexican braceros, those who left Mexico to work in the fields in the USA during the Second World War. Some of their descendants gathered in El Pueblo to dance to traditional Mexican music and engage with each other for this well-deserved recognition. Let's take a look. So today we're at the birthplace of Los Angeles and Pueblo. Uh, we're celebrating, obviously, uh, Dia de la Amistad, which is Valentine's Day. And today we have what we call the ex braceros. And these are the descendants, the, the, the children of the braceros who left their country of Mexico to cross the border uh, during World War II to uh, work in the fields. Todo el pueblo norteamericano, especialmente los hombres y los, los hombres mayores y los jóvenes, se fueron a la guerra. Entonces los campos agrícolas se quedaron vacíos y, y fueron cuando le pidió ayuda a, a, al gobierno de México para que vinieran los braceros mexicanos, o sea, gente del campo mexicana, que vinieran a trabajar las, los campos agrícolas aquí en Estados Unidos. Pues significa bastante porque ya realmente es una forma de reconocimiento que se nos está tomando en cuenta a los braceros, porque realmente los braceros fueron los que le dieron de comer al Estado, a Estados Unidos, a toda la, la, la comunidad norteamericana. Y gracias a los braceros, pues eh, Estados Unidos logró ganar la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Y por eso queremos que se les reconozca y se les haga justicia. I mean, these are the salt of the earth. These are people who are of very low income means, people who have been wanting a pension all of their lives, have yet to receive that pension. And they're the folks who are often, you know, forgotten and quite frankly, not recognized by everyday folks uh, in Los Angeles or in our country. Nuestro movimiento está vivo. 
y que estamos luchando en México y aquí en Estados Unidos. Y el compañero Kevin de León es parte de nuestro movimiento. It's fun for them to come together, to celebrate, to engage with each other, to dance and, and enjoy each other. So this is a great day. The climate crisis affects everyone in LA, which is why the Climate Emergency Mobilization Office's efforts are so important. They focus on equity, health, and community engagement, and through their Climate LA Equity series, hope to inform and give a voice to every community. All Angelinos can be part of the solution and contribute to help create the best policies. The Climate Emergency Mobilization Office was launched by the City of Los Angeles within the Board of Public Works to address the climate crisis with a focus on equity and health and community engagement. We really want to make sure that the communities of Los Angeles, particularly the most pollution burdened communities, have a voice in developing climate policy and equitable climate policy and investments. The top policy areas that we want to address are community climate resilience, as well as the decarbonization of buildings and homes. 41% or more of greenhouse gas emissions come from our buildings because our buildings are pretty much all connected to our gas infrastructure. We want to bring about um, solar energy, renewable energy. In terms of community, especially marginalized community, we also have to make sure that the utility rates don't go up for them as we're making all of these changes so that there's uh, equitable access to these resources that they need to adapt. What we, we need is an overhaul of our entire system and every community needs to be part of the solution and part of the investment. We've created this Climate Equity LA series. It's a virtual webinar series um, for the public, for the city of Los Angeles residents to participate, engage, learn more about the climate crisis, what they can do about the climate crisis, but more importantly, uh, provide their voices to shape policy. So it's not just an exercise. What they say will actually be taken to committees and council. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield is giving a new facelift to the arts area in Council District 3, which includes the Madrid and Taxco theaters, as well as the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center. The council member was on hand to share his vision for the new arts hub and how it relates to his economic development strategy. Check it out. I'm here with Daniel and Nikki. We are at the Madrid Theater, which is the centerpiece of my vision for Canoga Park Arts Hub to really transform this area in a very positive way and we're well on our way to doing that. It's seen better days, it is ready for a major facelift. This is part of an economic development strategy to build this area out, to really make this place shine. I think what's exciting about the Madrid renovations is that it's looking very forward in terms of the technology and opening up the space, but it's also being very welcoming and bringing in the community into the Madrid Theater. So it's not going to be simply just a drive-by kind of community. It's going to be fulfilling your vision of having this be a pedestrian community. If you kind of picture this space right now, you can see that it's very open and it's not necessarily very welcoming. It's also kind of loud and echoey. The lobby is going to actually have lighting that welcomes people as they come in. It's going to be levered a little bit underneath the marquee. What we're really aiming to do is really to make it much more open and pedestrian friendly and really become part of the community. One of the exciting things about the theater that we're going to do on the inside is that we've designed the seats so there's a beautiful pattern. In the new plan, we have our light booth and our sound booth on the same level, on the balcony level. We have the light booth, which will now turn into the administrative office. And one of the highlights of this whole project is that we're actually gonna take the piano and build some perfect new storage for it. And it'll be so amazing. It will really change how we do things. Right now, the Tosco is in kind of a very much before phase. We're gonna be changing the carpet, really make the space more welcoming, more friendly. We're gonna be doing additional work with inside, but we're gonna make it into a place that groups can come in, use, 
and really innovate and think about and develop great new works of art. We're really excited about what we're going to be able to do in here. The first is we are going to be removing all of these seating to be able to have in a larger extended performance space. We're going to paint the entire space black so it becomes a full black box theater and we're going to be extending and putting in a new sprung dance floor. So we're excited about the versatility of the space and the creativity that it's going to be able to inspire. Here we are in our arts classroom at the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center and although we cannot currently have our visiting school program in person, we are doing it online via Zoom. Over the course of the last nearly two years now, the team here has been doing classes virtually, so there's a huge library that we have. And how neat that you had to adapt because of the crisis, but that that adaptation will allow you to grow and even once we get back into the physical world and we're able to use the tables and all the supplies that are around here, um, I'm sure the innovation that's been developed will just continue and this, this, this center here will, will have a much broader reach. What you can see is that big things are happening here in Canoga Park and in the West Valley. The innovation that you all have been putting together combined with the, the funding that we've been able to get from a variety of different sources to make this happen, this is really uh, the start of something amazing. The LA Made series celebrates African American Heritage Month. Learn black history through an organized bike tour in South LA, or enjoy an interactive dance program at the Discovery Cube LA. All this up next on Things to Do. The Los Angeles Public Library continues their celebration of African American Heritage Month with their latest installment of the LA Made series. Join author and scholar Kyle T. Mays as he discusses his new book, An Afro-Indigenous History of the United States. Mays will be joined in conversation with educator and cultural critic Amber Starks. Mays' book explores current debates around the use of Native American imagery and the cultural appropriation of black culture. His talk will explore the history of black and indigenous activism and their continued relationships through various forms of popular culture well into the present. L.A. Made, an Afro-Indigenous History of the United States, streams on LAPL's YouTube and Facebook pages on Thursday, February 24th at 4 p.m. For more information, visit LAPL.org slash events. The Monumental Tour has made its way to Los Angeles thanks to the Kindred Arts and the 10th Council District of the City of Los Angeles. This collection of outdoor traveling art celebrates African American Heritage Month at four sites in downtown and South LA. And now the tour has announced a collaboration with Community Coalition South LA for a Black History Bike Tour. This organized bike ride will incorporate the locations of the artworks with a mobile docent taking time to describe the sculptures and artists. For those that like a more independent vibe, you can utilize the bike route and virtual experience which includes an audio companion and playlists inspired by the works. Let's get on and bike, LA. For more information, check out monumentaltour.org. The LA City Department of Cultural Affairs is teaming up with Silmar's Discovery Cube LA for the Science of Dance weekend on February 26th and 27th. Benita Bikes Dance Art Company will headline the Saturday events with an interactive dance program featuring their contemporary choreography and technique. Performances will include benches, on beat three, and a duet from Andre Lazadas. Benita Bikes Dance Art at Discovery Cube LA happens on Saturday, February 26th at 2 p.m. To pre-register for a free ticket, email benita at danceart.org. For the full lineup of the Science of the Dance Weekend, check out the events page at discoverycube.org. And that's a look at some things to do. And that's it for this edition. I'm Natalia Bilbao, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org, and we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.